Unit 6, Aquaponics and Containers. Aquaponics defined. What are aquaponics? Well, we discussed hydroponics in the previous unit. Aquaponics are very similar. It's the combination of two different growing systems. Aquaculture, which is raising fish and other aquatic organisms for food, and hydroponics, growing plants without soil using water as a carrier for nutrients. In aquaponics, we use waste from the fish to supply the nutrients for the plants. And the plants clean and filter the water for the fish. So both fish and plants are crops that can provide food and profit. Fish are far more efficient than animals such as cows, sheep, goats, or fowl at converting food to meat. And it makes them a good source of high quality protein for the smallest input of any meat animal. So how does aquaponics work? Well, the fish are kept in tanks and fed, often with commercial fish food, but occasionally with food raised on site. And that depends on the uh, type of fish selected and the space available. Water with the fish waste is moved either directly to the hydroponics system or to an intermediate filter system, then to the hydroponics system. The plants in the hydroponics system use the water for nutrients and thus filter the water and remove harmful substances like ammonia that would kill the fish if allowed to build up. The filtered water is then returned to the fish tank and then the cycle is repeated. Some additional components uh, can be added to a basic uh, aquaponics system. Uh, makes some of the process a little simpler. Intermediate filtering is one of those added components. Um, some systems include a type of gravel bed through which the water passes before getting to the hydroponics part of the system. The reason for this is that such gravel beds contain bacteria which break down ammonia to nitrites and then nitrogen. And that's the form that the plants can use so we're doing a little work before it gets to the plants. These gravel beds can also filter larger particles of fish waste uh, before they get to the plants or before they're cycled back into the uh, fish tank. And, <clears throat> pardon, they, the trapped larger pieces of fish waste then can be broken down into smaller bits and eventually microscopic uh, bits before the water moves it on to the next part of the system, the hydroponics. And a second thing uh, that can sometimes be added is vermiculture. And this means worm farming. And waste from the plants, dead leaves or entire dead plants, is used to grow the worms. The, the, the plant waste is fed to worms. The worms are then used as fish food, reduce, reducing the need to purchase uh, commercial fish foods. Here we have a photograph of a uh, small aquaponics system. The fish are kept in the bottom um, of this system down here in this uh, tank at this part. A pump located in the tank pumps the water up through that piping into these beds here and here, which contain the plants that we're trying to grow and fertilize. And as the water runs through the plant bed, it comes down the drain and back into the fish tank. A fairly simple setup. And obviously looking at it, you could 
you can see it's something that uh, could easily be built with off-the-shelf parts. The liner for the fish tank, for instance, and the liners for these beds are uh, just the same type of liner that you would get for uh, building a pond outdoors. And uh, the lumber is just uh, lumber from the lumber yard. This is a commercial aquaponics system. It's a little larger than the one that we just looked at, but it's basically the same idea. You have the fish tank down here at the bottom, and you have shelves with plants. Water is pumped up from the fish tank to these pipes. You can't see the ones on the top. The water is fed into the plants, collects in a drain, comes back down, and back into the fish tank. In this case, this uh, white bucket here in the middle contains fish food that works on a timer. So uh, power is supplied by this power cord. And uh, at regular intervals, the fish are fed. This is an even larger commercial system. Um, in this one, the water is simply cycled into the tank, back into it directly. And the plants are on uh, floating trays up here. You can see different types of plants on different trays. This way, the fish are actually in the tank beneath the uh, plants. The reason for this circulation pump is to provide aeration in the water uh, because the fish need oxygen to breathe. With the other systems, the water returning to the system from the plant uh, growing areas above provides that aeration, though additional aeration is often used. So what are some of the factors involved in aquaponics management? Uh, we'll take a look at some of those in the next few slides. But they include the size of the system, of course, the choice of fish that you use in the system, the location of the system, seasonality issues, input choices, and diseases. System size. This is a factor that you can adjust based on a number of other factors, such as your available space, your available money, and the desired yield of the system. It's possible to start with a smaller system, and that's especially true when you build it in conjunction with other things such as greenhouses, and then enlarge the, high, the aquaponics system as your finances and market allow. One thing to keep in mind that's related to system size is the number of fish required to provide the nutrients to the plants. If you have too many fish, the plants can't properly filter the water and uh, the fish may suffer as a result. Too few fish and the plants will lack nutrients and may require additional inputs or uh, provide lower yields. Unfortunately, the ratio of fish to plants varies with the fish and plant species you choose to grow, so that's something that needs to be worked out um, once those choices are made. As an aside to this, or, or an additional uh, thought for this uh, fish to plant ratio, um, it's always possible, if you have too many fish, to use an intermediate filter system uh, such as the large gravel bed type of system to help further break down the waste products of the fish before feeding it to the hydroponic system and then back into the tank. Um, that lets you have a larger fish to uh, plant ratio than you might normally be able to have. Um, next factor is the choice of fish that you put in your aquaponic system. Um, a number of fish species are used uh, suitable for aquaponic systems, tilapia, catfish, bass, trout, and there are more, 
Um, these happen to be all freshwater fish, um, which uh, is required by the aquaponic system because few plants, um, short of mangroves or something, could survive um, salt water. So the fish choice is limited to freshwater. Um, these four are probably the most common. Of those four, tilapia is the most commonly used. Um, the reasons being is they're tolerant of crowding. You can have quite a few tilapia in a relatively small space and they don't bother each other. They don't attack each other. Um, they put up with the crowding. The limiting factor being um, food and the oxygen in the water for the fish. Um, tilapia are also omnivorous. They eat anything from vegetable matter to uh, animal matter and thus they're very easy to feed. Um, they're a good tasting fish. The tilapia is uh, quite popular uh, in markets and very good tasting, and they grow quickly to a marketable size. Catfish have many of the same characteristics as tilapia. They're tolerant of crowding or high density. They grow relatively quickly and they taste pretty good. Um, catfish are carnivorous, more carnivorous than tilapia, though they're still an omnivorous uh, fish, but they do require more meat protein in their diet and that usually means they have to be fed um, commercial food. Bass are less tolerant of crowding than catfish or tilapia. Bass are also carnivorous. They eat almost exclusively animal matter and they will feed on each other if there are significant size differences between the individuals in the same tank. So you have to be careful of that and bass must be fed meat protein, so they require some outside input. Trout are also uh, carnivorous fish, um, but less cannibalistic than bass. Um, in the smaller sizes that are typically used in these systems, um, they, they feed on uh, well on pellet food and that sort of thing. Um, but they do have to be fed a high quality protein in order to achieve good growth rates. When young trout are tolerant of high density, the older they get, the less tolerant they become. Um, another factor here is that trout require cool water, generally less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so they're not suitable for warmer climates without some means of cooling the water. There are commercial water chillers available, but uh, when it comes down to that, it may be simpler um, better and more efficient simply to use a different species of fish like tilapia that can stand the higher water temperatures. Trout meat can command higher prices, so the trade-offs of feed and cool water might be worth it in some markets. Worth some research, probably. Our next factor was location. Like hydroponics, aquaponics systems can be built on land not suitable for in-soil agriculture. They can be set up indoors, in greenhouses, or even outdoors in some areas, depending on the climate and fish choice, or whether you're willing to shut the entire operation down in the winter. Due to the perishable nature of fish, once harvested, aquaponics should be set up as close to market as possible, and that makes such systems ideal for urban agriculture. It can deliver fresh fish immediately to grocery stores and restaurants in the area. Um, the location choices are therefore really flexible, uh, but most such systems in temperate and cooler climates are established indoors, in greenhouses. Seasonality. In climates with significant seasonal temperature differences, you have to take those temperatures into account, of course. Systems in colder climates require a greenhouse or a hoop house in order to be productive year-round. Now, fish are generally tolerant of a fairly wide range of temperatures as are plants, so you may not have to heat the greenhouse and, uh, or hoop house uh, to the same extent as if you were growing, say, uh, tropical house plants or something in it. Um, but it still needs to be an enclosed system uh, that is prevented from freezing or the temperatures dipping so low that the plants are injured. Um, so colder climates will also mean heating is required. Um, and you have to take those costs into consideration. But because water is a good heat sink, solar heating systems could be practical for a setup like this. 
And the water can be heated in the solar system and then large tanks of water can heat the air. Or the water could be passed through a radiator system, which heats the air. And then once the water is cooled sufficiently for the fish, it can be directed into the tanks. Input choices. Most aquaponic systems, and I would say here very, very few aquaponic systems are closed loop systems. Most of them are not closed loop systems. Um, they require some additional inputs, and that's usually in the form of fish food. Your fish choice can affect how much input you'll be needed. Uh, tilapia, for instance, can feed on algae and plant material. And you may be able to supply that in good quantity as part of your system. Um, trout, though, require high quality protein and require commercial feed. Some plants, the cucurbits, tomatoes, and peppers, um, require micronutrients such as boron in order to flower properly. And so a regular water test should be done to measure the level of nutrients and micronutrients may have to be added. And don't forget inputs such as heating, which was mentioned in the previous slide. Diseases, well, plant diseases, or fish diseases are obviously the two types of diseases we need to be concerned with. Now, if a plant disease can be carried in water, it can contaminate an entire system. And most plant diseases are fungal diseases, and many, many fungal diseases um, can be readily carried through water. So we need to be cognizant of the potential of uh, disease spread pretty rapidly. Fish diseases basically have the same issue. Um, they're easily spread through water and can infect entire areas. So limiting the tank sizes in which the fish are kept to keep possible infections to a minimum between tanks is often a good idea. You may set up your hydroponics or aquaponics system as a series of individual systems as opposed to one large interconnected system. That way, if you get a disease that happens in one system, it may not necessarily spread to the others. Um, but we have to be aware of and continuously monitor for both plant and animal diseases and be ready to take appropriate action. Um, one advantage of an aquaponic system is the ability to treat the water at a central point um, if it becomes necessary to treat for diseases. Um, you can put the fungicide um, or antibiotic uh, into the system at a central point and by the nature of the circulation it will spread through the entire system. Um, just another aspect of this to be aware of and monitored. That's it. So that is the end of uh, part one.